Hello, future medical coding professionals. Have you ever wondered how you can ace your CPC exam on the first try? Well, you're definitely in the right place because today I'm going to be going over some practice cases so that you can be prepared for your big day. I'm Victoria Moll. I'm a medical coder, auditor, educator, and content creator. And on my channel, I provide tips, tricks, and tutorials to help you be successful in a medical coding career. If you haven't already, highly encourage you to subscribe, hit the notification bell, and all of that fun YouTube stuff to support the channel. Now, before we start diving into practice questions, what if I told you that the exam itself is not just about memorizing codes and how to code, but a lot of exam strategy as well? For example, one of the things you'll want to do, especially with these longer case questions, is really scan down and see what are they specifically asking you and what are the potential answers. Because you don't want to spend all of your time reading a note, figuring out what the heck is it that I'm, I'm trying to pull out of here. And then you get down there and it's just asking about a diagnosis code or if a data service is wrong or something. And that way you know what to focus on when you're going back and reading the question and reading the note. Then once you've read through the question and the answers and you go back and scan, the other thing you want to do is use the process of elimination. So oftentimes you can easily eliminate one or two possible answers. For example, if it has an RT modifier and it says the procedure was bilateral, you'll know that option is out right away. And then look at what are your remaining answers, because oftentimes there's only going to be one or two code differences between some of those possible options. So don't spend a lot of time coding everything out from scratch if really your answers are going to have, okay, maybe one is I47.21 and one is I47.22. So don't spend a lot of time focusing on too many details when really the options for the answers are going to be very similar and you can just kind of focus on those particular codes. Remember, the CPC exam has really evolved over the years. It's not just about code lookup. It really is testing your problem solving, your analytical, your understanding of the guidelines, not memorization of the guidelines, but being able to quickly reference them and apply them. So by using things like looking at the exact question and the answers and using the process of elimination, it can really speed up your time on the CPC exam. Now let's go into some of these practice cases. And remember, the test is not just going to be code lookup. It's going to really test you on being able to apply things like the guidelines, understanding the terminology, and being able to apply them to scenarios. Now, I want to discuss, though, some of the top missed concepts for the CPC exam. So if you're going back and you're studying specific areas, these are the areas that are common to have people get these questions wrong, evaluation and management. That has, even prior to the recent guideline changes, been a big one. So e and um, there are there's an entire e &M playlist at the very front of the channel that you can check out. Also look for additional resources if your local chapter is having e and training or your Medicare contractors. I know mine is Novitas and they oftentimes have free training available on evaluation and management because they know it is a common hot issue. Obstetrics is one as well. They oftentimes like to throw in a question that's like a complicated pregnancy. Maybe a patient didn't have prenatal care and then they come in and have a cesarean or there's a twin delivery or maybe like a uh, one twin was delivered vaginally and the other twin was delivered via cesarean section. How do you code for that? So it's common that you will see a complicated OB case. And uh, that means also a complicated OB guidelines, those chapter 15 guidelines. Remember those chapter 15 codes, they take precedence over other codes. So it's common that they might want to test you on that concept as well. Again, not sharing what specific questions they'll ask, but that is a concept that uh, is commonly coming up on any of the study materials. If you look at the training manuals, if you look at the practice exams, they commonly will ask questions about those chapter 15 guidelines. Fracture care and then the external causes as well are ones that tend to trip people up. So one of the things that recently came up was someone said to me, hey, um, I wasn't aware that the, the CPC exam was going to test me on knowing 
different terminology outside of anatomy and things. And yeah, it, it is. Uh, so they are going to test you not just on code lookup, they're going to test you on some concepts as well. Now, this is a simpler example of one. The Medicare program is made up of several parts, right? Part A, B, C, and D. Which part covers prescription drugs? So they will want you to know the different parts of Medicare, which one covers hospital, which one covers physicians, which one covers the replacement plans and prescription drug. The prescription drug program, of course, is our part D Medicare. So as we're going to go through some of these cases, I will be sharing how we look these up because I think it's very helpful. Uh, I'm not quite sure what methodology I'm going to go through yet because sometimes people like it when I do process of elimination. Some people like when I show from start to finish. I think I'm just going to go with whatever, how I would tackle these questions personally. But for the Medicare, different parts of the programs, part A is your hospital, part B is your physician, part C is those Medicare replacement plans, and part D is your pharmacy coverage. Going on to our next question, we have here a patient with type 2 diabetes undergoes a comprehensive foot exam. What is the correct ICD-10 CM code? Now, the interesting thing about this one is when we look at this, we might think to ourselves, oh, you know, foot, am I looking for a foot complication? But when we really look at this question, are they saying that this patient has a complication of their diabetes. No, it's just saying they have type 2 diabetes, they're undergoing a comprehensive foot exam. So what we're really looking for is what is our uh, default code for type 2 diabetes. So with this, we do not have documentation supporting any complication of the diabetes. So we're going to go up to our diabetes section here, and we're going to go to our type 2. Type 2 is way down here if you see it. And our type 2 code, type 2 diabetes, E11.9. We don't have any further specificity here to provide any better detail. We just have that it is the E11.9 for our type 2 diabetes. So for this particular question, that would be our answer A. Now, again, another way that you could possibly tackle this type of question is saying, okay, well, Three of them are E11. You could maybe look up Z13 and 0.21 to see if you want to eliminate that right away. You could go right to your tabular list and start looking at the E11 codes. And again, we're going to verify this um, in our tabular list. You know, when I talk about exam strategy, um, that's sometimes a little bit different than how we learn how to do this coding, right? We always say look up in the alphabetic index, verify in the tabular. That is absolutely 100% correct. When we're talking about the exam strategy and saving time, sometimes we have to evaluate the risk. You know, how do I want to weigh the risk that I might find something different in the tabular list versus uh, do I just want to go, yeah, I think that's right. I seem to recall that that's the correct code for type 2 diabetes and just uh, and just zone it in at the E11.9. So here we have type 2 diabetes mellitus without complications. So that is verified as the correct code. Now for this question, we have a female patient is diagnosed with a malignant neoplasm of the upper outer quadrant of the left breast. What is the correct ICD-10 CM code? So in this case, we're really looking at the fact that this is a left breast uh, versus a right breast. But we have to make sure that when we are paying attention to something that we have two of, that we have a right side and the left side, that we're making sure that we're coding to the correct side. So when we're looking at this, that's one of the things we're going to look at. This is the upper outer and it's the left. Now with a lot of lesions, we use the table of neoplasm unless there is something directly in the alphabetic index. Like for example, actinic keratosis, they might try to trip you up on some of those because it has its own specific designation in the alphabetic index. We don't use the neoplasm table. Now, the neoplasm table you can find in your ICD-10 CM book, it's right after your alphabetic index is the neoplasm table. So in this case, we are here at breast and we are looking for the upper outer quadrant. So here is our breast, oh, upper, I passed right by it. Let me get a ruler out so we can get a better look at this. 
upper outer quadrant. So when we see here, our upper outer quadrant is C50.4. Now this is where I talk about the risk we want to take, right? If we to the C50.4. That dash there that we have, that means we need additional characters. But B is our only option that has a 0.4. Now you might want to say, yeah, I want to make sure absolutely 100% that that's correct. Verify it in the tabular. Hey, that's fine. But if you're like, hey, I'm, I'm, I'm going to take that little risk. I'm 99% positive that's the right answer. Go for it. That is, that is your personal decision on how much risk you want to take on not double checking. If you are someone who's not as fast yet in your coding, that might be a method you want to try and take to cut back on some of that time. But here, if we look, malignant neoplasm, upper outer quadrant of breast, and we'd look here, uh, this is the left female C50.412, which is our answer B. Next, this patient is diagnosed with acute bronchitis due to myoplasma pneumonia. And what is the correct ICD-10 CM code? Now, when we look at these again, they're all J20 point something. And we have to pick out of this, though, what is going to be our main term that we're going to look at. So is it going to be that we're looking at the pneumonia or are we going to look for the bronchitis? So our main term here is actually going to be the bronchitis. That's the code that we're going to start with. This again might not be a bad one to start just looking at the J20 codes. If you want to just start at J20, since you can tell they're going to be right next to each other, we have J20.0, 0.1.2, and 0.3. If we're looking though in the alphabetic index, we have here our bronchitis. And if we go to bronchitis, and then due to right here at the very, very bottom is myoplasma pneumonia. J20.0, which again, let's talk about our risk. We know that that's one of the options that we could pick there, J20.0. I might just going to go, yep, that's it. That's the one I'm going to click on or circle uh, or, you know, however else we're going to be testing in the future. But since this is one where it's like a due to, you might think, oh, there could be some other guidelines there. I'm not sure. I want to double check. So we can check in here, J20.0 acute bronchitis, uh, let's see here, due to myoplasma pneumonia. And it says here it includes all kinds of different stuff. There's not a code also note. So that would be our correct code is our J20.0. So here we have patient is diagnosed with a closed fracture of the orbital floor, orbital floor meaning the uh, eye socket essentially. Uh, the right side, what is the correct ICD-10-CM code? When we kind of look at these though, like you can see here that a lot of them on the case start with SO2.31 something. So we could go right to those SO2.31 codes here if we wanted to, um, or we could go for the alphabetic index and look at the fracture. There are a ton of fracture care codes. I'm sure you can imagine with all of the bones in the human body, there's a lot of different ways to fracture them. So if we look here to fracture, orbit, floor, blowout, it'll take us to SO2.3. So SO2.3, we're here at the fracture of the orbital floor, and then it's going to give us unspecified right or left. This one, it looks like was the right side. So here we have right side. And then we have the X there because we need a placeholder before we put in our seventh character extension. So is it going to be the character extension A, D, B, or S? So you might be looking at this page and going, oh my God, where's my character extensions? So we have to start flipping backwards until we can find them. So right here on the next page is where it gives those seventh character extensions. So here we have, it could either be A for initial, D for for uh, initial open, so we have initial closed, initial open, uh, subsequent, routine, delayed, malunion, and then sequela. And it says this patient was newly diagnosed, right? So newly diagnosed means it can't possibly be a subsequent encounter because they just were diagnosed. It can't be a sequela, they were just diagnosed. So newly diagnosed, closed fracture orbital floor. So that would be our 
A for our seventh character extension, meaning that this would be our answer A, and that would be the correct code for that problem. Now, for this particular case, one of the things I want to uh, draw to your attention is this is uh, a prophylactic. So they don't have active cancer in either breast. It was completely removed from the right breast, and now we are doing a removal of the left breast just to make sure that that one doesn't develop cancer as well. So we're not going to code this as a C code, an active cancer code, because it's a history of breast cancer. But now we are removing the left breast. So right now we're doing this mastectomy of the left breast. You can see those LT modifiers up on the different options that we have for this case. Now, when we look at these four different options, as far as CPT, we only have two choices. We have, it can be 19303 or 19307. So 19303 is our simple mastectomy. 19307 is actually when it starts getting into removing the lymph nodes, uh, potentially some muscles in there. So this is more of a simple mastectomy. There's no notation here in this about them taking lymph nodes out or them going into the muscle of the patient. So right now we can eliminate a couple of our codes. We can go ahead and eliminate the option B and our option D because we know the CPT code is going to be 19303. Now, what did I say about this? This is no longer an active cancer. This patient does not have cancer anymore. The cancer was removed and the other breast is being removed prophylactically. So they don't have cancer in that breast either, which means we're not gonna use that C code, which means this is going to be our answer A. We can verify that in our uh, ICD-10-CM book. So we can see that Z85.3 is our personal history of breast cancer and Z40.01 is the code for the uh, prophylactic breast removal. So encounter for prophylactic removal of the breast. In this case, we have a 65-year-old female with hypertension, hyperlipidemia, presents with chest pain. The EKG reveals ST segment elevation, and the patient is diagnosed with acute transmural myocardial infarction of the anterior wall. The patient undergoes percutaneous transluminal coronary angioplasty in the left anterior descending artery. What are our correct CPT ICD-10-CM codes? Okay. So for this one, we can see, again, process of elimination. Let's think about that. We have some similarities. Our A and C both have 92920, and then B and D have 92928, and then we have some differences between them of an I2109 versus an I2102, I2101. So I would start this out with eliminating our CPT codes because we can cut our potential answers in half. Now, with these particular codes, I'll show you here that they have this little hash symbol, which means they are resequenced codes. So when you go to look for them, there's going to be this little section here that says, hey, they're out of numerical sequence. Go and check over at this code range so you know where to look in your book because they're not going to be on the page you probably think they're going to be. So our 92920 code is percutaneous transluminal coronary angioplasty, simple major coronary artery or branch versus R28, which is a trans -cath percutaneous transcatheter placement. And that's not what was done here. We didn't do the transcatheter placement of an intracoronary stent. Uh, we did our 99220, I'm sorry, 92920. So we can eliminate right away a couple of our options. We can eliminate our B and we can eliminate our D. Get a little fancy here with the scribbles. <laughs> and then we just have to look at our A and C. So what's the difference between A and C? We don't have to look at I10. You should know by now that that's the code for hypertension. That's the first one that everyone learns. E78.5, we can safely assume is our hyperlipidemia, right? So we're looking at I2109, I2102. So here is our ICD-10-CM book. We have I21, I20, almost coded that wrong. Okay, so the 02 versus the 09. I'll zoom you in a little bit here. So O2 is ST elevation, 
left anterior descending coronary artery. 09 is other coronary artery. So what do we look here? It says here, this was done in the left anterior descending artery. So for that one, we're going to pick our 02 code. So our 92920, I21.02, and there's no additional characters. Whew. Um, the hypertension code I10, and then our hyperlipidemia E78.5. Great job. You are well on your way to becoming a coding professional. Now, remember, practice is key when it comes to the CPC exam. And don't worry, because I have got you covered on lots of different resources. In fact, I have a comprehensive CPC review with practice exam. If you go to contempocoding.com, you can find it there. It's designed to review some of the key points, test you on your knowledge, and get you better prepared for the exam. Or you can definitely check out the free playlist that I have over here that goes through all the different sections that you will need to understand for professional fee medical coding. Otherwise, I will see you guys in the next video. And until then, just keep on coding on.